Hello friends, uh, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the mechanism of transposition of the DNA transposons. Now we have talked about the three basic type of transposons. One is the DNA transposon, another one is the virus-like transposons or viral re retrotransposons and the third one is uh, the poly retrotransposons. Now in this case we have talked about the genetic structure of this uh, common DNA based transposons. Now the mechanism for their transposition is simple cut and paste. Now that means we cut the transposable element from uh, the donor site and we paste it onto the recipient site which into a particular location. For that uh, in they are having a particular enzyme which is called uh, transposase which is acting as both uh, endonucleases as well as the integrase enzyme. Now uh, what we are having in this case we are having uh, the actual transposable element from here to here. Uh, at, at both the ends we are having the terminal inverted repeats and at the central we are having uh, the genes that, in, that, is, that are co coding for that uh, enzyme transposase. Now here the DNA cleavage of both of the strands happen and as a result of this DNA cleavage by the transposase it generates this the 5 prime phosphate and 3 prime hydroxyl in the opposite strand all these things too. So end up with this and all the flanking D DNA uh, host d uh, region is cut out and only this part of the DNA will be taken for, in for the integration purpose. Now before integration what we are having this is the target DNA this is the donor DNA inside the target DNA there are specific sequences specific nucleotide sequences where this transposon needs to be inserted. They recognize this site with the help of basically this uh, terminal inverted repeats and also some uh, sequence specificity into this particular place by uh, locating this uh, the oxygen of this hydroxyl of 3 prime will attack this phosphodiester backbone because uh, it acts it can act as a uh, nucleophile and it will attack and as a result of this attack it will hold on to it and it will incorporate uh, this uh, strand uh, which is need to be transposed onto this donor uh, onto this uh, recipient or target dna Okay. Now, as a result of this attachment, what we can see, what we can see here, the hydroxyl in opposite direction of three prime will attach this DNA to the donor DNA uh, to, to the target DNA strand. But the phosphate terminals remains as it is because phosphate cannot attack uh, the diester backbone, so it will leave. Uh, so one stranded nicks are there and one strand strand is attached there. We need to fill these gaps, otherwise they will be lost in DNA integrity. For this purpose, uh, as a result of this attachment, what we can see, we can see that this 3' hydroxyl of this, uh, this short stretch of this target DNA can initiate the DNA polymerization because it is having the 3' hydroxyl and DNA polymers can sit on to it and it can elongate the three prime from this 3' hydroxyl, it, ca it can reseal the gap. As it enters into the resealing of this gap, there is DNA ligase enzyme which will come in and it will reseal uh, the NIC the NIC translation happens and as a result of that the target site uh, is uh, duplication is completed and we form a new uh, DNA we form the DNA of, of the target and the target DNA is totally in incorporated with the help of these transposons so that is how the transposition happens uh, via the cut and paste machinery why we call it cut and paste just we cut it uh, the transposon from uh, the receive donor cell and we incorporate it into the target DNA Okay, so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.